Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you think the title of this video looks like the EU are aliens that abducted TikTok to do unsanctioned stuff to them, well, you're right, but I also need to keep those titles short, so yeah, pro. Anyway, this week we have the aforementioned EU looking into TikTok for potential privacy breaches and violations and problems with compliance with GDPR. We have Tumblr looking into joining the Fediverse by implementing the ActivityPub standard and Flickr thinking about doing the same thing. And we have Fedora unveiling some screens of their brand new installer, which looks to be a lot, lot better than the previous horrendous Anaconda. So let's dive in right after I tell you how you can get $100 of free credit to start your own Linux or gaming server. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. So it looks like the EU is finally taking a look at TikTok, the Chinese-based short-form video application you probably all know about. The EU will look into how the data from European citizens flows to China, as well as ads that are targeted to minors. Basically, they just want to see if TikTok respects the GDPR, the European Rules for Data Handling. Ursula von der Leyen, the nightmare of most big tech companies, and also the president of the European Commission said they're launching several proceedings, including one from Ireland, focused on data transfers to China and how miners' data is processed, and another one from the Netherlands regarding targeted advertisements. TikTok had already committed to better practices, like allowing people to report ads that target children, banning promotion of inappropriate products and services, like alcohol, scams or cigarettes, or reviewing videos from people who have more than 10,000 followers. Since TikTok already made concessions to the US to store data on US servers, I have no doubt they will also comply with the rules the EU sees fit to impose on the company. Personally, TikTok is a platform I have zero trust in. It's probably what many people will call a boomer take, but I don't understand the point of this application. Like watching cringy videos of people dancing or trying to be funny, is not my thing. Except most of my videos also fall into that category apart from the dancing. Oh wait, no, I did a dance once. Okay, well, I guess I should be on TikTok then. Tumblr will soon join the Fediverse, that giant social network linking multiple services. Tumblr will add support for ActivityPub, the W3C standard that lets Mastodon, PixelFed, Peertube and a ton of other services talk to each other and interact. Tumblr might not be as big as it once was, but it's still sizable. And this means a potential influx of hundreds of thousands of users to the Fediverse, which might be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you like your social networks. If you're wondering what this means, well, you could follow Tumblr posts on Mastodon, for example, and have a unified feed for multiple social networks. Tumblr is owned by Automatic, a company that already owns WordPress, another part of the Fediverse. There is no date yet for when this will come to Tumblr, it's just marked as ASAP for now. This move seems like it also kindled some amount of interest in the ActivityPub standard, with the CEO of Flickr asking people on Twitter if Flickr should also add ActivityPub support. He's not promising anything, but he's looking at the idea. Personally, I'm all for more major services connecting with the Fediverse. It's how social networks should always have worked not being locked into a specific platform, but being able to talk to people from any other service and comment on their stuff and follow them wherever you want. It's what the internet is supposed to be. And that's what the Fediverse and the ActivityPub standard allows. 
So if you want to learn more about the Fediverse and most of its major services that you might want to use, I have a video, it's linked in the description below or in the card somewhere up here. Fedora's installer called Anaconda is one of the least intuitive there is on Linux. Badly placed buttons, unclear error messages, messy partitioning tool is just really confusing. And it looks like people agree as there's a new installer in development. It has a web-based user interface and uses Cockpit to power it. It's a web-based graphical interface for servers. This new installer isn't finished yet, but it already lets you choose the install language, select the disks, automatically partition them, let you look at what you've selected, and displaying a progress screen, so it can basically let you install Fedora completely already. The screenshots, while they look a bit bland, definitely look a lot more legible than Anaconda ever was, with a clear progress indicator on the left to see where you're at, and some text help on the right to let you understand what exactly it is that you're doing. The install process window also shows nice steps that you can understand easily, it just looks like a way more user-friendly option. Now, at best, it should be included in Fedora 38 in April 2023, but depending on how things go, it could be deployed at the end of next year instead. Hey, they managed to start working on it and almost have a deployable version in less than a year. That's more than we can say about Ubuntu's new Flutter-based installer, which we haven't heard anything about for months now. And also, yes, you can comment why so many installers down there, because I'm wondering the same thing, seriously. Why do we need so many? Microsoft finally brought its badly named Windows subsystem for Linux, which does the opposite of what it's called, because it runs Linux on Windows, not the opposite. Well, they brought it out of beta. Version 1.0 can be installed from the Windows Store in one click, and it works on Windows 10 and Windows 11. It still lets you install a distro of your choosing inside of Windows, and it runs it at near-native speeds, complete with GPU acceleration and support for graphical Linux applications. So you could run any KDE or GNOME app inside of Windows if you wanted to. It also supports System D now, apparently. WSL is a love it or hate it kind of system. Either you think it's great, because it means more people can discover Linux, try its apps and see how much better it is for development or command line based workflows, and ultimately lead more people to try Linux as a real install, or you think it's going to kill Linux by making people stick to Windows and perform the tasks that are easier on Linux using WSL. I really don't know where I stand on WSL. On the one hand, it gives people more options to try and run Linux, which is cool, but on the other hand, it also means that people are not going to get out of their comfort zone and try another operating system. iCloud, Apple's service that lets you store everything in the cloud and sync stuff across devices, looks like it has a major security problem, at least for Windows users. Apple offers an iCloud app for Windows that lets you sync bookmarks, photos and more, and this app has problems. First, it's corrupting videos taken on iPhones when downloading them on Windows. That's bad enough, but there's a bigger problem. Users are reporting that they're seeing photos and videos that don't belong to them, showing up in their libraries. Some users report seeing images of other people's families, soccer games and other things that have nothing to do with them, which might imply that iCloud has an issue with authenticating user accounts and knowing what goes where. And this is obviously a major problem if it's confirmed, as it would mean your data isn't private at all and could pop up randomly on other people's computers. It kind of puts a little dent in the Apple is more private thingy. And yeah, sure, it looks like it's only happening on the Windows app for iCloud and not on other services. And yeah, I clamored for this app to be supported on Linux for a while now, but now I think it's a good thing that we don't have it. Cinnamon 5.6 is the latest update to Linux Mint's desktop environment, and it brings a bunch of cool new stuff. Mint users should get it before the end of the year, and it will be the default version in Mint 21.1, which should release in December. The big headline feature is what they call a corner bar, which is basically just a slim button at the bottom right of the taskbar that you can configure to do what you want when you click it or middle click it. It lets you show the desktop, the desklets, the workspace selector, or the window selector. You can also just hover it to show the desktop. Nemo, the file manager, will now only highlight the file names when selecting files, instead of also highlighting the icon, and this looks much better. 
and they added a shortcut to access the display settings straight from the right-click menu of the desktop. On top of that, you will see less password prompts, for example, when removing a Flatpak app, removing shortcuts or local applications that are only installed for the user. The update manager will also remember your password so you don't have to enter it for each operation. Finally, Flatpak support was added to that update manager, which should make it easier to handle this format in Mint. Cinnamon is a really, really good desktop, and sure, their rate of progress isn't as fast as GNOME or KDE, but honestly, they don't really need to move that fast. Their desktop already does pretty much everything you might want and has one of the most complete suites of applications and utilities out of the box. All they are lacking now is Wayland support. Now let's talk about what's new in our desktop environments. On the GNOME side, there's Dynamic Wallpaper, a new app that lets you create wallpapers that change with the light or dark mode of your desktop. Or there's Upscaler, an application that lets you enhance and increase the resolution of images like in any police investigation show. Money, the personal finance manager, has a new release with the ability to group transactions into categories with automatic currency detection and bug fixes. Bottles, the all-in-one Windows app and game launcher, has a completely redesigned detail view without a sidebar and with all the various pages merged into one. The settings have been rearranged to be more legible and a lot of stuff has been rephrased. And in KDE land, discover error messages will now use a normal dialogue instead of overlays that disappeared too quickly. The system monitor widget lets you monitor power usage for NVIDIA GPUs and you can display the current temperature directly on the panel. Discover also gets more legible progress bars for installing and updating and it won't try to check for updates on a metered internet connection. The developers also are working on a new welcome app that will better introduce Plasma features to new users. It should make its debut in Plasma 5.27 early next year. And that's pretty awesome because next month I'll have a video talking about how KDE's power is kind of useless if you don't explain to the user how you can make use of it. And I think this welcome app will slot in nicely with this video. Now let's move on to the gaming news. Nintendo proved once again that it's a terrible company going after Steam Grid DB because it talked about Switch emulation on the Steam Deck. The company sent some DMCA takedowns to remove cover art images from the website, which does just that. It hosts images that you can use as covers for your non-Steam games on Steam or the Steam Deck. Removed images include ones for Pokemon, Splatoon, Xenoblade Chronicles, Super Mario Odyssey, and Breath of the Wild. Sure, Nintendo, go after PNGs and JPEGs of your games because they imply that people might emulate your games, which is totally legal if you own the game physically. What a dumb move, seriously. Valve introduced Proton Next, which is a new Proton flavor, as they call it that gives people the chance to have access to the latest testing Proton release. With this announcement comes the ability to test Proton 7.0-5, which makes a bunch of games playable like Bulletstorm, Rift, Unravel 2, Battle Realms, and more. And the Steam Deck won Best Gaming Hardware at the 40th Golden Joystick Awards. These are presented by GamesRadar, and it's unsurprising, seeing as this chungus of a portable computer has absolutely taken the world by storm since it released. Still, it's nice to see the Steam Deck getting the recognition it deserves, and it's proof once more, if it was still needed, that Linux is an excellent gaming platform. And that's great, because today's sponsor's devices ship with Linux pre-installed. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they sell worldwide a big, big range of laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. And why that would be better than just buying any old PC that runs Windows and replacing Windows with Linux? Well, it's because it removes all the guesswork. You just slap your distro on it, it runs, everything is supported and you're good to go. And they have a big, big range of devices from the smallest Ultrabooks to Nux to gaming towers, gaming laptops, any price point, any need you have can be filled with one of their devices. And they're also pretty customizable, they're repairable, you can have your own logo on the lid of the laptop, or you can have your own custom keyboard layout laser etched on the keyboard of the laptop. Basically, there are choices for everyone. So if you need a new device and you want to make sure that you support Linux development, and you want to make sure that your device actually runs well with Linux, Click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo laptop or desktop. They're really, really good. 
So, thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, you can also click the dislike button and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video. There's a PayPal link in the description. And there are also links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!